I am Jessica Paxton, Product Marketing Manager at Smith AI. Today, we are going to talk about how to maximize oh. staff potential in a remote environment. This is not a webinar to sell you on remote working. We're not going to do that. We already know the benefits of remote working. We all love remote working. We've been doing it for a really long time. This is a webinar to talk about like I said, those tips and best practices for hiring and managing remotely, onboarding, and what your new staff need to know whenever you're bringing them on board, collaboration tools that we love and that we think are an absolute must when you're working remotely. As you just heard from a little bit earlier, we're all over the place. And here we are coming together remotely and collaborating in this webinar. We'll also talk about how to stay engaged um, with clients that you can't be face-to-face -face with, because I know that's something that's top of mind for a lot of business owners that are working remotely and going remotely. And we'll talk about how to build some camaraderie and improve um, your team bonding. If you have any Q&A, go ahead and put them in the chat. And before we get started, um, like I said, we'll do introductions. I'm Jessica. Smith AI. I am the product marketing manager. I do work fully remotely with Smith AI. I'm based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Smith AI is a fully remote company. Um, we have, oh boy, um, I want to say close to 600 employees now. Um, and we are all fully remote. We hire all over North America from Mexico, US, and Canada. Um, a lot of my coworkers that I work closely with, you know, live on the West Coast or live in Utah. I have one that lives in New York State that I talk to a lot. So we're all over the place um, and we do work fully remotely. So let's go ahead and introduce Miss Kim. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy Wednesday. Um, my name is Kimberly Bennett. I am a, a practicing attorney as well as a co-founder of two additional businesses. So I run my practice, K Bennett Law. We are a fully remote practice, have been a virtual practice from the very, very beginning. Um, and we are New Jersey, Pennsylvania practice. I happen to live in Atlanta. So there you go with virtual. Um, I also run two other businesses. Um, and one is not just virtual, but also international. So we cross border. So we are a Canadian based company um, um, and it's Fidu. And we provide a platform for service-based professionals who deliver subscription legal services. And then um, I run a community, again, fully remote, and we have an international team as well. So I live the remote life, really love it. I think it's really important um, prior to even many of us transitioning to it. So I'm really excited for this conversation. Thanks for having me. And my other, my other one is designing the new legal, forgot to say it. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's pass it over to Sushata. Hi, everyone. I'm Sushata Stevens. I'm... I've been a people business partner in the tech space for a little over 10 years, various um, tech companies. I have, I'm also an adjunct, adjunct professor for organizational psychology. So the topic of remote work um, is definitely coming up in that space. I have experience um, working in co-located companies and taking those co-located companies into a remote work environment due to a pandemic. And I have experience here at Help Scout um, working in a company that's been fully remote from the beginning. Um, so I have a visibility to you know, the practices and transitioning to fully remote and also being fully remote and, and scaling those practices. Um, at Help Scout, we're about 175 employees. Most of us are North America based, um, but we have people all the way from Australia to Ukraine. So we are a very dispersed organization. And thank you for having me. That's amazing. Um, also from Help Scout, we have Travis here. Um, thanks, Jessica. Hi, everyone. Um, very excited for this webinar. My name is Travis Williams. Uh, as Jessica mentioned, I work at Help Scout as the Partnership Business Development Manager. Um, so throughout the conversation today, uh, you're going to hear mostly from these three, uh, and I'm going to be monitoring our chat and our Q&A. Um, Jessica did just get the chat 
um, switched on for everyone. So you should be able to go in and add, you know, where you're from, where you're working, you know, are you remote now or just interested in maybe moving to it um, there in the chat. And then if you do have any questions um, throughout the conversation, go ahead and click that Q&A button and I'll be monitoring those and calling those out uh, for the three panelists here. Um, but yeah, super excited. Uh, I've been remote for, this is my third fully remote company, you know, started with most people on like March 17th, 2020, uh, been fully remote ever since. Uh, and yeah, have a lot of things I've learned, a lot of things that I've changed about myself and the way I work and excited to hear what these three, um, you know, what their insights are and, and what they've learned. So thanks. All right. Fabulous. Well, I appreciate um, everyone doing those quick intros. So let's go ahead and just dive right into some of those conversations and some of the questions that we're looking to have. Um, so, you know, I don't I don't necessarily want to ask the big question of what are some tips and best practices, because that's that's really um, vague and I think hard, hard to answer. So let's let's focus in a little bit and say, like, how do you find that your team and Sushata, we, we can do this one to you. How does your team and your org structure differ when all your employees are remote compared to in the office and or hybrid team? And, you know, how do you build an org structure when you're working with employees all over the world and in all different time zones? Thanks, Jessica. Um, so at Help Scout, we are across you know, several time zones, um, we've had to adopt a, or not had to adopt, but we have mm -hmm. <laughs> an asynchronous working model. Um, basically we've set up the way we work to be able to work asynchronously. And what that means is we really put a lot of time and investment into being able to document, um, and being able to bring people along through our written communications. So we're heavy in Slack. Um, Slack is our primary way to communicate. Um, and, you know, we're courteous and we have rules and or norms with how we communicate, um, making sure that we're scheduling messages so we're not pinging people through the middle of their night, things like that. So it's just a lot of hygiene and updating your status, putting your settings in Slack so that you're setting those boundaries and not getting the pings at all hours of the day. Um, and really just everyone being on board and being understanding with not everyone's going to be on and working and responsive when you're working. Um, so we have that asynchronous work style that gives us flexibility. We also use tools um, to document our processes. So, you know, we really strive that we can self-serve. <laughs> um, if there's customer question, our customer team is probably the best at doing this. Um, it's amazing to see th their practices and how they document. And our, our VP of customer calls um, documentation, the silent team member. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's really important. And just what we've set up to make sure that we can successfully work across all those time zones in a fully distributed so, way. So by using asynchronous com communication, you don't have to structure your organization and you don't have to change your organization structure to fit the remote culture or to fit specific time zones. You have built your culture around that async communication. That's what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I did want to piggyback off something you said. You mentioned leaning heavily into the written word in Slack. Smithy, I use Slack as well, and we do also use the scheduled messages, which I am 100% for. I use them <laughs> daily. But in addition to that, um, we lean very, very heavily on voice memos and video memos inside Slack as well. Um, especially when, you know, when you're not able to have those in-person meetings and when the time zones don't quite meet up or it's hard to schedule time, you know, we can still have what feels like the synchronous conversation, but it's done asynchronously via the voice um, memo in Slack. So I'll leave you a voice memo. Two hours later, you'll respond back via the voice memo hour after that. 
So we're having the same type of conversation, but it's asynchronously. Um, but for us, that works really, really well. And Travis just said in the chat that he loves the voice memos and Slack as well. So I appreciate you bringing, bringing all of that up. Um, Kim, do you have any, anything to add there about the org, yeah. org structure? I'll, I'll talk about it from a smaller company's perspective. So we don't, we're not 175 um, team, which is amazing, like Help Scout. So we're, we're a much smaller team. And I think, you know, it's a consideration that we we're always kind of thinking about and how to maximize our effectiveness with, with also managing well being. And I think asynchronous allows for that. I think when you're smaller, I say some of the things that I tend to think about managing multiple businesses is one, we, we do work across multiple time zones. So at any point we could be for hours, it's maybe plus or minus five hours, right? Where there could be a difference in where we're at. Maybe someone's traveling or someone is, you know, moving to a, a place short term and they're going to be there for a couple of months, which has happened with our team, right? Or, or we just generally at least a three hour spread. Um, we do think about it. So our org chart, I don't think necessarily changes, but as a small company, I think you just have to be aware of how you work. And if, you can manage that asynchronous conversation, which means you're not going to get immediate responses. So I think for us, same way, communication is really important. I think when we, we take an approach, when we think about org chart is what are our functions and making sure we're solving for the functions and the needs of the organization. And so if we can manage asynchronous and know we won't have immediate always responses and you build that into your process and your project management, then it works really well. If you feel like that's not something that works really well for you, then I would consider, you know, at least um, thinking as a remote team, are there within uh, time bands that, that you have to work in? So while I maybe I can't think through my company, I do work with other companies via my firm and uh, their remote teams as well. And so some teams have employed like, you know, bands of work times where they like to, for people to be on now, not an eight hour band, cause that wouldn't be very like helpful. Right. But maybe it's like, Hey, everyone at least has the same three hours where you can have some of that. So I think there are ways to think about it. And I think organizationally, you still need the same functions. You just have to think through, at least this is how we approach it. How are we showing up to, to meet the needs of the, the current team that we have and make sure we're meeting the goals that we're looking to achieve for the organization. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Um, and since we're having the conversation about the organizational structure, um, how do you foster a sense of um, peer to peer and employee to manage your relationship when you're working, when you're working remotely? What do you do to help foster those relationships? I guess I could jump in. I think, um, I think I, I like the idea of using, so we've gone through various transitions with how we use Slack and letting Slack be a place of like, what would it be if you had a team in an office? People would just jump in and have a random conversation. They would like, you know, stop by your office. They would grab lunch. They would do all these things that you don't necessarily have that same exact feeling. So I do think about trying to foster it by creating similar environments or very different ones that really are that, that promote learning about maybe we have various cultural experiences, learning about various cultures, people sharing, you know, what, what they love about where, you know, where, where they're traveling to embracing that we are remote, um, but having the, having fun channels where people could just share who they are. And Slack is something that I found has been helpful for peer to peer. And then also just establishing a time for people to literally meet and, and pre COVID, I would say we were like, always have cameras on as someone who was like, um, fully remote before it was like a major thing. I thought it was helpful to do that sometimes because not everyone understood it. I think post COVID, I think that's a hard thing to say, right? Because people could get, could get Zoom overwhelm. So we kind of provide that space where if you want to connect, you can have like that cameras on conversation or just cameras off and just talking conversation. I think we're, we're talking Slack right now for a couple of things, but um, yeah, like, you know, using voice memos, using video memos, using huddles and just giving people the chance to just have relationships and not always work. Right. Cause I think the thing that you miss about office and the thing we all have to remember is like, no one works eight hours. They work some of it and they develop relationship relationships, some of it. So you have to give the space for your team to develop relationships and not just work. So that's what I would say. Absolutely. I love the idea of having those, or I don't not only love the idea, but we do the same thing here at Smith AI. We have those informal channels where 
people join based on their different hobbies. You know, we have a music channel, a cooking channel, there's sports and everything else under the sun that you could possibly imagine. Um, and then we've got all these different like watering hole channels that mm -hmm. you can hang out in and, and get to know your coworkers that you might not otherwise interact with, especially in other departments that you don't talk to a lot. Like I work in the marketing department, you know, it's, it's rare for me to go talk to someone in the billing department, unless we're in one of those types of channels. So in addition, doing those huddles, um, you mentioned the camera conversation, mm -hmm. and I think that's worth having its own conversation about. We do not require cameras mm -hmm. on internal meetings. And, you know, it is, it can be overwhelming when you're working remotely to always be on, you know, there are some days that I am, I'm in the zone and I want to get my work done and I've got my headset on and I've got my t-shirt on and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to town, I'm getting my work done. It is not a camera day. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So we, we have cameras optional, um, whenever we're working internally, um, and I, you know, that, that I guess is a personal preference, but I, I do really appreciate that. I don't need to feel like I'm always being watched, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sushada, do you have anything to add here? Yeah. I mean, as far as developing the peer to peer relationships, you know, plus one to all the things, having the channels, like we all have our favorite channels to hang out in. My favorite's the reality TV channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one thing that we do at Help Scout that people really love is we call them, it, it's called a fika. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a Swedish term and it's having, you know, coffee and a pastry with a friend. Mm -hmm. So we have the, we use the donut app and it um, kind of cycles through the organization and randomly assigns you someone to FICA with for the month. And people are pretty good about sticking to those recommendations, setting up the FICA and making it not about work. Um, and then we have our FICA channel. So after people do the FICA, they get to post like, hey, I talked to this person and I never met them before. And we got to talk about, you know, our travels or just some, some interest that they found that they had in common. Um, and so we share that and then you know, the, the cheesy high five picture, like through mm -hmm. the Zoom. <laughs> I so love that. It's always fun to, to read through the Fika post, but that is one thing yeah. of how we build. See, Travis, things. we need this in the, in the um, chat. We need the link to, to the donut app in the chat. Yeah. I love, I love this idea of the Fika. Like I do it. I think we have like, um, some like really small businesses kind of like myself here. And you're thinking like, well, how does this work in our small business? But I think like that same idea when we, as a small business owner, I think of my team a lot broader too. And I think that's helpful because you might not have, maybe I see like, there's like, we have some solos here, right? I see like, you might say, oh, I work by myself, but do you, right? You might interact with particular, you know, you know, opposing counsel a lot. You might interact with a particular vendor a lot. You might in interact with a particular service provider a lot. And so expand maybe your definition of team and maybe implement that same thing. So I know I do coffee chats. And so I think about my team as like, you know, other people that I don't necessarily have day to day with me, but like I, that I want to develop relationships with. So I, I, lo I love that. That's a, um, that's something that y'all do at health. Cause I could see back when I used to work at a very large organization that it would be, a, it would have been nice to have ways to enter and to connect with people that is a little bit like pushes you down a path without it making it too hard. And I think coffee and pastry, cause I love them both would be amazing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm already thinking of ways to pitch this yeah. <laughs> up the chain. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Um, what other tools do, do you recommend? Um, you know, not just informal tools, but do you have any other tools besides Slack and you mentioned the donut app, um, other tools that you love to use. Yeah. One of the things that I th I'd say kind of complements the, the Fika is we have, um, we use an app called know your team. And so when someone onboards, it asks them like all the questions and, mm. and some good ones too, that are, that are good for the leaders. Like, how do you prefer to get feedback? Do you want it right away? Do you need some time to process? Do you want it in writing? Um, or how do you prefer to get praise? Um, do you like it in a public setting or, you know, do you want to hide when that happens? Mm -hmm. So we get insights that, to that. <laughs> see, that is important, whether you're remote or not, 
You need to know <laughs> yes. that information about your team. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we get those questions. And then once a week, it's usually, you know, Thursday afternoon, we get a little pop up in Slack and it, it's a random question. Sometimes um, it's as simple as like, do you prefer Tapatio or Cholula or Coke or Pepsi? Things like that. Those are the ones that most people will chime in on because they require like it's a quick answer. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes it's, you know, a a would you rather kind of question, but they're just little icebreaker questions that we do on a weekly basis. We get a good amount of participation and people, you know, will react to what other people say. And you can go through and you can look through those logs. So as you're, you know, planning or preparing for your FICA, you can say like, oh, like we've both been to Japan or something like that. And it helps like get some of those conversation topics going. Yeah, I love that. We use, um, we use like GeekBot as like a way to, uh, as an app to kind of do some asynchronous pieces, like through some stand- standups and things like that. I think Know Your Team probably s- similar, but it sounds like even better. So I'm going to check that one out. Um, of course, we use some, I think some of the standard things we were talking pre we, pre going live about um, Calendly as a tool that I think really, whether or not you are, it's for your team or not internal, external, I think it's great. I think I mentioned earlier how I use Calendly for coffee chat. So I have like a specific coffee chat link. That's really easy. Like, Hey, let's just like grab a coffee and I do virtual coffees. Right. So I give people the option. If you are where I'm located, you can pick a local place. If you're not, let's do a virtual one. And then, you know, we do like, um, like gift cards, as you know, so that they can go grab a coffee as well. Um, even if they don't do it at that moment, um, other things that other apps that we use, of course, I think, um, we mentioned like process and, and, as a smaller company, I would say we use things like Notion, which we really like as a tool to, to manage and keep our processes, our systems. Of course, then we use some other things, but communication being so, so key, I do think finding and iterating and seeing what works best for your company. And that's what we've tend to done, tend to do. So whether it's for like, and because I run three different businesses, I'm, you know, the leader of three different businesses, I'm thinking about how to have that cohesion across all of them. So we tend to use like all of the same stuff to make my life a little bit easier. But yeah, those are some that I, that I've like that I like, and I'm I'm sure I'll think of some more um, that help do that. But I think anything that improves communication, but that gives people the flexibility to like show up in their best selves um, is important. So. Absolutely. We're huge notion users as well. Um, I, I am a notion geek getting in there and writing out our processes and procedures is one of my favorite things. So absolutely love that. Once we learn notion things from you, then I will remind myself about this. Yes. Yes. I'll send you my Calendly link for a coffee, <laughs> for a coffee chat and we can talk all about notion. <laughs> absolutely. All right. So we talked a little bit about tools and, um, you know, using those tools, but what about the best practices behind um, staying engaged, staying productive, and staying interested in your work while you're at home? Because I know that's something that some employees and some um, managers, you know, they're thinking about of, well, how are you going to stay engaged? How are you going to stay on track? What are you going to do? Like when you're sitting at home on your computer, I use the same computer to work that I use to play video games on. So how do you, how do you manage your time? What do you do there? What recommendations do you have, not only for managers, but staff as well? I'll jump in first. I'll go go for it, Sushada. You got it. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, for me, it's routine and being disciplined in that routine. Well, fortunately, I have kids that force me to stick to my routine sometimes, like, <laughs> um, but one of the things that's important for me is like, like, having a cutoff from the beginning of work to the end of work. So I call it my, you know, pseudo commute. And it could just be like taking a walk, taking the dog for a walk. And that's my commute. And that just divides the line between work time and, and home time. Yeah. And that also, you know, goes into maintaining a very healthy work-life balance when you're working from home, because I know that's something I have struggled with. Um, when I made the transition a few years ago to working remotely is, is making that transition because when you commute, you have a very clear defined line of this is my work life. And then this is my home life. And when you transition, um, it, it, it was definitely a struggle for me and doing exactly what you said, 
having a morning routine where I took my dog for a walk. That was my morning commute. That was the start of the day. And then I would take a break during the midday for lunch and to take my dog for a walk again. And then at the end of the day, I took my dog for a walk. Like that was my new commute. So (laughs) it's crazy that we had the exact same kind of idea, but it worked. It absolutely worked. Um, And using that to set those boundaries, not only to set the routine, but also to maintain that work-life balance. It worked really, really well for me. Kim? Yeah, I, um, I tend to... I, I prefer flow over routine. So like, I'll be on the other side, right? Like, and I prefer like integration, right? Like, so like, I, I think um, I went remote 2010. So it's, so it's since, so I 13 years of practicing what works and what doesn't work for me. And then thinking about the team, I think one of the things is just like embracing that it is a different way of working and that's okay. And then if, if you, if you need to start and the end and define time, that's okay. Right. But I think high communication about how you work and what feels best is the most important as a manager, because then you can plan around it. You can create your processes, your strategies, you can show up around it. You can, you know, hire as you need, as you grow around it. And that's been something that I've, you know, learned over the years. So what are things that I, I personally do, and then I share my experiences so other team members can pick what, pick what, fits for them. So I, um, I, I do like morning and opening things. One thing I recently implemented, which I would recommend is morning pages. And it's like, a, it's a creative process where you just like brain dump, they say three pages, but like, mm, I do a little bit less, but I just, you know, a little bit. So I just do a little brain dump to try to like release things in my, in my head in the morning. Um, and then I, I, one, I schedule meetings with myself. I think the biggest tip that I learned, even when, what, before I was remote to schedule meetings with yourself, it feels um, odd. I tell my team members to do that, but you need to some, sometimes say, I need this working block. So what do my meetings with myself look like? Maybe it's a working block, right? So you're not getting overscheduled. And I do think in the, during COVID, there was a lot of overscheduling happening. Cause it's like, well, I could just like meet with people like back to back. And you're like, but no one does that. So stop doing it. As someone who was rem- remote for a very long time, it got really tiring really fast. Right. So, um, so I, I mean, I encourage, people to like figure out what is the the best way they show up. Where does their attention best flow? Are you someone that's high creative in the morning, high creative in the evening? And then as an organization before hiring, we just have to decide, can we do that? Can we, can we fit that person the way that they work into the way that we need work to get done? And if they match, it's a good fit, then that's okay. And we do that. So I, same thing. I schedule breaks. Um, I try to do like quick meetings. So I do like my default meeting is a 15 minute meeting, not an hour meeting. Right. I try to do like on Google where you could do like, we're, we're Google users. So if you're in Google, probably outlook, I don't know, probably has the same thing where you could do like the, you end your meetings a little bit early. So like they're 10 minutes versus like going to the hour. Um, I do buffers on all meetings. So Calendly is great for that. There's plenty of other tools that do that as well. Um, I think those are some of the, some of the tips, but really just knowing how your energy flows. And I think if you're not sure, and as a manager, I encourage my team to like follow their energy because I'm not going to train someone. So I prefer to say, work in your strength, work how you work, and let's see how we can be as effective and productive and like well-being enhancing as possible. And then, you know, and then go, go from there. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work as like, I'll speak as a smaller business. Sometimes it's hard to fit all of it. And you just have to be honest and open that you can't do that right now at the size of your business, but that doesn't mean you don't strive for it or think about it. And so that's, those are just things that come through my mind when I'm thinking about how to manage through it. Yeah. Absolutely. Another thing I do um, as part of my morning routine every morning is I set up my to-do list every morning and it doesn't necessarily mean, and I don't stress if I don't complete everything on my list. I make my goal list. Sometimes I complete everything on my list. Sometimes I don't, and it moves to the next day. Sometimes it moves to the next day. Sometimes it moves to the next day. And I actually learned this from my sister. And you keep track of how many times it has moved to to the next day. And after it's moved to the next day four times, I take a step back and I reevaluate. Is this still a priority? Should it still be on my to-do list? So that's something else that I do every morning. Um, I make myself a to-do list just to help me keep on track, especially um, as I make that to-do list, just like you said, Kim, blocking off work time for yourself Mm -hmm. so that you have dedicated work time. So, and this 
doesn't matter if you're remote or in the office, having that dedicated time to make sure you can get done exactly what you want to get done. I think Brilliant. that you know, just hearing, you know, Kim with morning pages, Jessica with your to-do list, you know, I do the same thing. Um, you know, really what it's all about is you have to be more intentional about your day. So, you know, you start your day, you set your intention, what you're going to do. You're intentional about how you block your time, set your boundaries. That's mm -hmm. how you make it work. Yeah. And I think as like managers, giving our team members the power to do that for themselves too, right? Feel like they have that power to do that because I think it's really easy to do it on our own. And then it's like, oh, I set my day, but like, is your day interrupting my day, right? <laughs> and so then you just have to like think through what does that actually look like? And whether that means you're, to your team of one and you use a lot of service providers and vendors to support you, same thing applies or your team of, you know, I would say probably Shishada, you're probably saying the same thing, a team of, you know, hundreds, right? You're still thinking like, I want to be intentional and I know the other person is. So how do I respect both sides to get there, right? Yeah. Um, Travis, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I have had a couple things that um, that have really worked well for me and for folks that I've worked with. Um, one is the the walking meeting so mm -hmm. you know, a lot of folks mentioned like taking a walk before work or after work but like i've even jessica you've been on a walk during our calls right facetime you know or zoom on it's great and like i've had um a, a manager who really just preferred phone call one-on-ones so most of our one-on-ones he would be just on a just like i dial a cell and, and he'd go walk around and, and we'd chat um something else that's worked really well for me is for, for engagement specifically is like a change of scenery, right? I have my office, I, I dedicate this space to, to work, you know, 90% of what happens in this room is, is me working. Um, and I don't like taking calls anywhere but in this office. But if I have a, a afternoon free where I just need to knock some things out, um, I often go to like a, a bookstore or a coffee shop that I really like. And just that change of scenery to me feels almost like I'm starting a new day and I have kind of this fresh energy, you know, after lunch. Um, so that's been really helpful for me. You know, if you're, if it's okay with, with, you know, your manager and your company to, to go elsewhere, or even I can go back to California and work from my parents' house, mm -hmm. that change of scenery keeps everything fresh. So it's not like I'm living in this 10 by 10 room, you know, all day, every day. And if you don't have the benefit of going for a walk, um, like, like I did that time that we, um, we had a walking meeting. Um, I do under my desk, I have one of those little machines so that I can stay active. I won't pick it up, but I do. I have one of those little machines under my desk because, you know, it, it can, you know, working remotely and being in the room all day, it can feel repetitive and you just need to get a little bit of movement going, stand up, stretch your legs, that sort of thing. So thanks. I know a couple yeah. of us talked about um, like managing communications. I I love, and this, I'm just jumping out here and asking it, like how people think about knowledge, man. I mean, we said it like, but knowledge management across um, the teams, I think as we've grown and changed team members and just thinking about personally, I found as a remote team, like managing knowledge is a big piece of reducing anxiety, being able to delegate better, being able to just get more effective, more productive without like making people work longer. So, you know, in a remote environment, what are some thoughts that everyone else has on like how you're managing your team's knowledge and maybe even your personal, but really like the team knowledge? Um, well, one of the things that we do, we, we document, we have, we use Slab as a tool, we document yeah. the processes. Um, another habit that we have is, is in Slack and we work out loud in our channels. So you have your, you know, your people team channel or your business team channel, marketing channel. And when you have a question, instead of going directly to the person and in, in getting in their, their private messages, asking it in the channel, because there might be other people that have the same question, or there might be other people that have that question later. So it's kind of working in public, asking your questions in public. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I completely agree with that. We really try not to have any conversations in private messages. 
um, conversations should be happening in those channels, you know, and you can have, I mean, on the marketing team, you know, we have a dozen channels for all different, all different topics, you know, whether it's our social media channel or webinar channel, but then I have other um, channels that connect different departments. So I have a channel between me and the AEs and, you know, we can all collaborate there. They ask questions. Anyone can chime in and answer and spread that knowledge. We mentioned Notion earlier today. We also use that to document very, very thoroughly. And when someone does ask a channel a question, it's not only, um, you know, answering, but showing them where to find the answer next time. Mm -hmm. So if the answer is inside a Notion guide, hey, this answer can be found here, you know, scroll down a tiny little bit and there it is. Or, you know, the thing that you're looking for is on this website page. If you navigate here, you can find it. Um, so completely agree with everything she said, you know, no private messages, get out of those private messages, mm -hmm. because that kind of also goes back to those water cooler type conversations that you have in the office. Let's say I'm walking down the hallway and I hear a few people talking about a project and I go, oh, I, I used to work at a company and I know a whole lot about that. Mm -hmm. Those types of conversations can't have if you're in private messages, but if you're inside those channels and I hear you talking about Calendly or Notion, I love Notion. Mm -hmm. Let me help you with that. And then, um, you know, you can jump in and spread that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. That may, I think, I think it's one of those things that continue to think through, like, how do you create this, that the experience I don't think it needs to be the same, right? I think remote and in-person is different, right? And that's okay. But how do you still keep some of those elements that you want? And I think sharing of knowledge, but then knowledge not getting lost is important. So I heard you both say like using the channels, but then going back and documenting, which is what we do too, right? But like having that habit, thanks Rashada, that's what you were saying, right? Having the habit of doing that, right? Of like making so making sure we um we we have the conversation there, but then say, okay, let's document it here or like Jessica, like, or here it is already in case you didn't know. So thanks. I was like, I just went in and I just asked the question. I was like, I'm just going to ask this question since we're having it. Yeah, time. let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, we've talked a lot about internal processes, managing employees remotely, using tools internally remotely. So I'd love to shift gears and talk more about staying engaged and connected with clients while working remotely. And Kim, I know this is your ballpark right here. Mm -hmm. I know this is exactly what you do and what you help other business owners to do. So, um, you know, how, how, how can you help or um, what, what do you recommend for businesses that are going remote or that are remote that want to stay engaged with their clients they want to maintain that personal relationship, but we've mm -hmm. got to do it over video. Mm -hmm. So first, which is, which is so funny, I'm, I feel like Slack should just like come in and be like, thank you for saying Slack all these times, <laughs> um, you know, like, great. Um, so uh, I see Travis mentioned in the chat, Slack Connect. I agree with that, right? It is a definite, it's a great, as Slack has evolved and like, double down on what they're good at and not like take away the things that maybe don't make sense. You see that, right? And I think the same holds true for all of our businesses. Double down on what you're good at. Don't do the other stuff. It's like, it'll take you off a track, but I digress. Okay. So Slack Connect is really great because you can connect two different businesses and just have this space to talk, right? About things that pop up that keep the communication. But I do think, you know, like the one-off calls, I, I, you know, I'm I'm still really a, a, just a big fan of just having a random conversation because at the end of the day, we are not we're all people that happen to work in businesses, right? So we're we're developing relationships, we have our interests, and the more that you can connect, of course, do the business that which you're there to do, but you also connect as a person to a person and find the time to just like ask about what's happening in their life, right? You know, have that coffee chat, like I, you know, like. Like, you know, doing the calendar and like, hey, let's, I haven't spoken to you. Let's just catch up. We don't need to talk work. Let me see how things are going. Because I think that that's important. I think, you know, where, where you can get in person, leverage it. I, the, the upside to me of being remote is that you can be even more intentional, going back to what Shasad said, about where you go, right? Because then you can decide to say, well, a lot of my clients are going to be at this particular event. Let me go to that event. 
right? Whereas when you were in an office, there was other expenses. So now we've removed the office expense for those like solo smalls. Now you can really be intentional about where you're going to go show up, where your clients are, where your potential clients are and develop relationships or like, you know, um, just sending, sending different pieces of just reminders of who you are. I know it sounds like, oh, do I want to send the cookies or the chocolate or whatever, but you know, it's a relationship. It's a nice touch. If you listen to somebody and they say, you know, they like peanut butter, but they don't like chocolate. And you make sure you get the peanut butter that has no chocolate in it. They're like, not only did you listen, you cared. And we had that in a random conversation. So it kind of, either you've documented it well, heads up, you know, good, good for you, or you're a great listener and you've reflected that back. And so I think being a, being someone that can reflect things back, I, I meant to say earlier, earlier, I'm a psychology person too. So I love that you do organizational psychology. So anyway, we don't, I'm not going to go down that path, but I think <laughs> reflecting things back and, you, you know, just being, being a person, right. Meet people sometimes in person, use video, use calls, um, you know, send them a, you know, a thank you gift, um, or just, I'm thinking of you it, there's, and it, I don't mean like spend a million dollars. It could be $5, right. It doesn't have to be a million dollars, but I think those are ways to stay in contact with your clients in terms of non-work related things. And then work related, you have Slack connect, or you have, you know, other tools that really allow for you to, to share having a great client, you know, portal where you can really share and make it very easy for the clients to do that. I mean, that's, that's our whole like Fidu thing, right? Like making it easy for your clients to interact with you with the needs that they have and, and reducing the friction. So I think being thoughtful about how do you develop relationships and then also being very thoughtful about how you're designing the experience. So your clients don't feel like they're having to like search for all the things that they don't, they don't feel like they're getting overwhelmed by all the content you're sharing because you think it's helpful, but it's just team too much, right? For what they need. And you know, so things like that, that at least that that's where I would start. Okay. Well, we mentioned um, Slack connect, which I think works really well um, when communicating with other businesses. So for partnerships, B2B, things like that. But what if you're B2C, do you have any tools that you would recommend um, for B2C companies that, I mean, uh, there, there's tons of tools out there. You, you, there's video tools, there's email communication tools. Yeah. So maybe we focus less on the specific tools and more about um, how do you maintain being personable while working remotely? Because being digital does not mean that you have to lose all personality and that you have to lose yourself. And I think that sometimes happens when you're writing an email or when you're communicating over video, like you know, you, you lose part of who you are and you lose that personal connection. I'll say fight against it, right? Like be you. I think that's the best part of, I think the transition of where, how work has gone over the last couple of years. And I think if we talk about like, you know, there was, there's a great resignation, it's because people want to be them, right? They feel like there's a disconnect in how they're showing up in their business and how they want to show up. But yeah, I mean, think about using, there's so many video tools or there's so many, um, portals or platforms that you can, you know, think through how I want to connect with my clients to make it easier, to collect with my customers to make it easier. Um, at least, I mean, but I, I've been talking a bunch, like, what do you think, Shashad? I don't want to take over that conversation part, but. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm right there with you. It just like be you. And I went back, I was like, Slack is, we need to do an analysis on how many times Slack comes up in this conversation. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, I, Piggybacking off of the the last question about just staying connected with clients, like I think emojis really help, and being able to use emojis in your in your communication and normalizing that, and it not being like, oh my gosh, they use too many emojis, it's unprofessional. But that's a way to really like where you don't get the benefit of tone and body language, you have emojis, mm -hmm. and sometimes a great way to connect with people. <laughs> especially through that Slack connect is sharing the emojis that their organization creates because, you know, you can get those custom ones in there and you're like, oh my gosh, where'd you get that one? That one's so funny. I wish we had one like that. And, and Giphy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, as Giphy, get it. Yes, yeah. it's, it's how you get to, you know, kind of show your personality and also, you know, give someone a little bit more context into like the mood and the tone of the conversation um, because you can't get that through writing. Yeah. And I think if you're in writing, then like add the, add the emoji, add the gif, right? Like, don't be afraid to say, you know, I think I like 
in the legal space, it could feel like, well, we have to show up a certain way. But do you? But do you? Right. That is just what we were told. And there are plenty of people that would love to just have a relatable person that's helping them through an issue, an opportunity. And so I think that's the same thing. You know, we're, we're communicating with our with our clients or customers when we're not B2B and we're B2C. But I guess in my head, I think a B2B is because the business is paying for it, right? A B2C because the person's paying for it. But at the end of the day, we're individual to individual. So like you can use the same kind of things to another individual, like, you know, using more interesting, you know, don't be, don't be, you could be formal when it makes sense to be formal in your writing, but not every moment. It means you have to be so formal. You don't have to, you know, use every piece of exact right punctuation. If I send a marketing email, it's not going to be, the punctuation is not going to be right. No, it's a marketing email. That's what it's for. Right. It's really fun. So, so I think the same thing. I have a habit. And the reason I mentioned earlier that being digital doesn't mean you have to be boring is I have a habit of when I write emails, they are very formal. And that is because mm -hmm. that is the way I was taught in school. That is the way they are very letters to grandma style emails. <laughs> um, so I bought, the fancy version of Grammarly and you can set it to give you feedback on your tone. Mm -hmm. And I set mine um, when I write an email to actually tell me when I'm being too formal and to make suggestions to help my emails be more informal and more conversational. And it has done wonders. It's like Grammarly comes back and it's like, really, Jessica? Mm -hmm. Are you writing this? Are you writing like a letter to the president? No, mm. delete this. And it's it's actually been really good. It yeah. is a good tool. Yeah, I, th I think that I think that finding tools that help support the environment and the experience you want is important and not being afraid of them because I do look at tools as like a number, another team member, right? They can help us be more effective so we can show up in the ways or standard standardized ways of like how we want to show up. So I think, yeah, like find the tools that like a Grammarly or like a, like Loom or, you know, video ask there or uh, Bongiorno or like, there's so many like things out there that you could do these fun, quick connections that, match your company culture, but also allow for you to, to scale it and are super remote friendly. So like, awesome. Absolutely. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. So one thing I would love to talk about because all three of us have remote companies and services and tools that benefit to stay engaged with clients while working remotely. So I would love if you guys can do um, <laughs> the quick version of what we all do and what our companies provide and the services that we provide. So Sue Shada, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, so Help Scout is a communications platform. We, um, we provide a shared inbox for our customers to communicate with their customers um, and, the, you know, a host of other features, messaging and, and being able to um, reach out and broadcast to the customers. And the re and, you know, also we talked about knowledge sharing, knowledge management, you know, we, a huge piece of our tool is that being able to capture the knowledge that comes out of the conversation. So one of, you know, part of the feature set in our shared inbox is that you can go back to other messages and, and see what was in there. You can, you know, get that loaded into our documentation piece of the software. So, and someone else on <laughs> the sales side of things can speak way more eloquently about it than me, but um, you know, the documentation is there and our, our, software does support being able to like take that step from communicating the message out and and saving it for later. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um and Travis will I'm sure put a yes. link in the chat of how you can reach them. Um and Miss Kim. Yeah. So yeah, I like I said I have multiple. So this also a small business owner, you have multiple businesses, right? You do all those things. Um, so K Bennett Law is a trademark and brand strategy law firm that provides subscription legal services to leaders and executive teams that are growing impact focused brands. So we provide what you would think of as like outside GC, but specifically on the brand side. So we provide chief legal officer fractional services and we show up just like as a team member. So we there, we're there to support businesses, whether they're a smaller business and they're still, they haven't like quit hit that million dollar mark or they've 
surpass that. And they're looking for a much more in-depth like um, experience where we're essentially like their legal department if they're not ready to, to have one. So we help we help them grow it and transition to having one inside. So that's what we do. We love focusing on brand strategy. And then Fidu, we are a client experience platform. So the complete platform to deliver, sell, and then scale your subscription legal services. So we, um, yeah, we provide that single source of truth for your your service-based clients to come in and like communicate with you, right? To not feel overwhelmed, to get the messages that they need, to get information that that they need, to get documents that they need to sign them and to do all the things. And at the other side for the provider, we make it really simple to deliver it at scale. And we focus on subscription legal services because as you see, I do a subscription law firm, subscription platform, you know, one plus one. So, um, and then, um, my design and the legal, we're, we're focusing on um, building a mastermind and a membership that um, of legal professionals who believe that we can design an anti-racist legal system that embraces innovation without sacrificing well-being. So we're much more business-focused mastermind that really just has some fundamental beliefs about how we should show up in the legal industry and how we should do things differently and show up as our authentic selves, whether that means working remotely or you want to be in person. So that's that. that's what we do. Thank you. And again, yeah. Jessica Paxton with Smith AI. Smith AI is a 24 seven virtual receptionist um, outreach campaigns, which is outbound calling as a service and live staffed chat service. We are 24 seven. We are also fully remote, which I mentioned earlier with agents all around North America. And, you know, we answer every time when those calls come in, we do everything from qualify the leads. We will book appointments on your calendar. We'll take payments for those appointments and consultations if you'd like, and we can integrate with your CRM. We do integrate with Help Scout. Um, and if you are curious how amazing our services is, our, how amazing our services are, you can ask Kim because she has been a customer since 2018. I looked it up, Kim, 2000. Oh, good. I was like, how long have I been? I have no idea for a very long time. Yes, August you. or April, 2018, there actually. There um, so are there any oh, questions? Five years. This I is my five-year like anniversary. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm sorry. Happy anniversary. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you so much to the panelists. Um, thank you so much to Travis for manning the chat. Are there any questions? Anything anyone wants to know about working remotely or... You know, would you like to, if you'd like to get in contact with any of the panelists, let us know. We've put our contact information in the chat for everyone. We will hang out for a few more minutes in case there's questions. Thank you all for attending. Yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, I, I haven't seen anything come through Q&A yet, but we'll hang out. Um, really anything at all that's on your mind. Questions, comments, reactions. We're, we're happy to address them. And then, yeah, do we have, um, maybe let's, do we have the panelists uh, like LinkedIn's? I can find them. I'll over. send it out after actually. Okay. Cool. Yep. So what I'll do is after the webinar later today, I will send out an email with the recording and with the links to learn more about all of our services. And I can add those LinkedIn's as well. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. It was a great combo. Enjoyed learning. I've learned some new tools. I know I have I have some stuff to look up. Like I'm <laughs> definitely going to look up Donut as soon as we are off this oh, call. <laughs> That's the one I'm most excited I'm about. The coffee chat with you for the tips and tricks on Notion. I oh, yeah. am just starting Notion and I'm, I'm in that anxiety phase of like mm -hmm. my notes from where they are to into Notion. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, um, if you're into knowledge management, there's a, um, it's building a second brain, a book, um, Tiago Forte has a, um, I don't know if, I don't know if he coined the term or not, but he has a process called para. And so it's how you like manage your digital knowledge. I've been on this, like, you know, it's something, it's something I think about all the time. Like, how do we get all the knowledge out of everyone's head? Also where I have, I like to collect a lot of knowledge. How do I get it on my head? So <laughs> check out para. That's like the way to organize it. But building a second brain is a book that he now has out. He has other stuff, but if you start there, it's pretty, pretty good.
<laughs> Travis, you are amazing. Yes, Can you come to you. all of my webinars, please? <laughs> I'm just, I love books. So anytime someone recommends a book, I have to look it up. Yeah. And I do prefer to not buy them on Amazon, but it's the easiest link to find. Yeah. So hard. But we do got uh, Jeremy popped in. Um, are people at Smith AI bilingual? Also, in order to properly vet a potential client, uh, are the people answering the phone, et cetera? Uh, so for, for you, Kimberly, folks answering the phone, are they trained in law? The the virtual receptionist from Smith. I can let Jessica do the bilingual part and then I could do the law part. Cool. <laughs> okay. Well, either way, um, we our receptionists are bilingual, both English and Spanish. And I, I can briefly answer this. And then I think, Kim, since you're here, it'd be great to have you piggyback since mm -hmm. you are an existing client. Um, our agents are not trained in law, but we are trained specifically on your firm and your business. So whenever we build the call flow, we will ask about what type of client you want to have. What is your ideal client? We will then build the intake questions specific to your business. Kim, do you want to elaborate? Yeah. And I'll say I've been with Smith a long time. So like five years ago, what they do, you know, today. Um, but I'd say, you know, I don't think you need them to be trained in the law. Right. Because the goal for me is a, a way to um, be a point, initial point of contact and an ongoing point of contact so that I'm not always having to answer my phones like or my team doesn't have to answer it. We are a small team. So answering the phones could take up your entire day and then you get nothing done. So what, what I, what I like to think about it is how do you think through what are the key questions you need them to ask for you to be able to then have like a decision tree, right. To make, to make a decision. Is it a yes, they continue or no. And then your process, like we were talking processes. So again, in the remote environment processes matter, you're, you're hiring a remote, you know, receptionist team to work with you. Like when they say it's the right fit, then what happens when they, when they do the questions and it comes to a no, then, then what happens? And then everything, whether it's tech or manual takes over from there, but yeah, no, I, I haven't needed them right. to be trained in the law at all. Right. So after we do, um, after we qualify the lead, say we ask different qualifying questions to say, yes, this is a client that you want to work with. It's only at that point that we would then book the consultation on your calendar or complete the intake form. If they don't meet the qualifications, then we can refer them to someone else that we would build into your decision tree. So if you have other um, local firms that you work with that you refer business back and forth, if they don't meet certain requirements, we refer them elsewhere. If they do meet your requirements, then we book them on a consultation and fill out the um, the client intake forms. And I'll say, like, personally, I also, it could be like if it's someone's looking to schedule something else that's not a client because I get those calls too. There could be a, there's a way to like, here's the calendar for that. So, you know, yes, for your clients, because true, but like you probably get other calls so they can manage those other calls and and put and route them in the place that you want them to be too. That's what, that's what they do for me. So, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, if you have any other questions, um, please do put them in the chat. I also put the, um, there's a booking link. I'll put it back in the chat again. That booking link is if you want more information, go to our website. You're more than welcome to look around our website, but that link will get you connected to someone on our team that can tell you all about our services. Yeah, the, the link I dropped in, same thing for Help Scout. That'll take you uh, kind of just to our, our homepage um, where you can surf, you know, information on different features and there'll be uh, some options to, you know, if you want to sign up for a free trial, we offer that to anyone who's interested, a 15-day free trial. Um, you can also book a demo if you need to see something more with a specialist. Awesome. That was Travis. I got really excited. I thought we had another. <laughs> it's, just, it's just me again. Um, yeah, I don't see anything else coming through Q and A. Okay. So we can wrap up. Thank you so much, yeah. everyone, for for joining and and for the three of you here. Um, all amazing recommendations, you know, insights. Right. I I knew before we started this group would be awesome, and I was right. So. Thank you, <laughs> thank you all so much. Have a great night or a great day.
Bye. Bye.